What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fathom, man, Eric Shee Tabor. Uh, we are going to be talking through tonight, Friday's NBA slate. I want to thank everybody who showed up for our little live sweat thing. We had a blast with it, and I think we'll probably keep doing it because uh, I think it was pretty fun. And and yeah. we, we haven't we haven't we're not committing fully to Thursdays for sure, but it seems like a good day. So so we definitely want to keep doing more of that. Oh. Also, want to ask you guys please to remind and uh, like and subscribe and all that stuff if you haven't already. And we've got a nice big slate tonight after a kind of a weird little three gamer last night. Um, I did have a shot though with a we had a shot at the overtime for yep. maybe a, maybe yep. a win and a fadeaway, which would have been something. But uh, but still, it was a you know slightly profitable night and and you know not going to complain too much. So ready to get into today. Sheets, how are you doing? And uh, yeah, let's let's get into it. All right, let's pull up my 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 screen. We'll just we'll just get going. Um, uh, as far as again, as far as the weekend goes. Um, uh, I will I will be there live with Bobby on Sunday to try to see if we can play teams other than Minnesota Detroit. I'm, I'm gonna I'm hopefully gonna try. Um, and uh, MMA content is up. I'll be playing that. And I guess it's safe enough to say also that we're 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 starting to develop our Stake Kings um Stakings thing. But we'll 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 give a more formal announcement of that after we speak to them today. I yep. guess. Um, but that was a lot of fun. And the live sweat thing last night was fun. This is, uh, this is, this is, this, uh, is a lot of fun stuff going on right now. So let's just keep it going. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, well, let's, let's, uh, let's jump out. Let's jump on into it. We got, uh, Knicks and Charlotte right off the bat, which right off the bat it's, uh, I mean, this is, this is the kind of game environment that you certainly don't mind the idea of stacking the individual plays for me aren't aren't necessarily quite as exciting. I think that you know, like you got Mitch Rob, I think is a good play, but obviously we know there's volatility there. I do like quickly, um, and I don't like that this game is the, is the first one. I like Randall and Brunson a little bit, so I'm, I'm sort of deciding what I want to do here. But I, I certainly do like the game, and I'll just I, I'm I'm good with PJ Washington on the other side. You've also got potential value in Nick Richards, but I'm probably not going to do that. Um, just realistically, I think you're going to get better value later. And then Kelly Oubre and Terry Rozier, both, both I think are very much in play. So I have this whole game as interesting, but nobody who I feel like is like a, I don't have anybody on my full on priority list yet. I just know I want exposure to this game. What do you, what do you feel about this one? Yeah, I guess uh, you know, Obi Toppin is out. That's, that's helping a little bit. Um, I'm getting the same guys that you, came up with on the Knicks and I have them rated really high. I have Mitch Robb rated high. I have Jalen Brunson rated high. I have Julie, Ju uh, Julius Randle rated high. And I also have Emmanuel quickly rated high. Um, so I figured I would throw that one in also. Um, on the Charlotte side, yes, uh, Ubre rates well. I, I, he will, I, I will continue my streak of never, never getting there with, with Kelly Ubre, I guess. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, your PJ, PJ Washington, I thought, if I'm not mistaken, you talked about him in the last game that they, yeah. that they played. And I thought he did, he, he was doing well. I didn't follow up to see how he finished yeah, out. It's sort of his normal thing where he had like 20 fantasy points in the first quarter and ended up with 30. Um, well, you know what? 42, yeah, 42 and, before that. Yeah. So that's, uh, again, uh, well, if he gets 34 minutes instead of the 30, he could, <laughs> that, mm -hmm. that, could, that, could that could, that could help. And yeah, the Knicks play, uh. Once again, I think it's kind of a low total. Again, I'm underestimating Char. I guess I'm overestimating Charlotte. I suppose as far as their ability to generate generate offense, um, and and have no defense because I just I just remember Charlotte being being, you know, more fantasy friendly than this. But anyway, um, yeah, Brunson quickly, Randall Robinson, and then on the other side, uh, Ubre, I guess always uh, Rozier and uh, and PJ Washington. Uh, again, watch for this, you know, Cam Reddish starting maybe, that kind of thing, um, or Quentin Grimes, but you can't play a billion guys in this game. Yeah, there's a lot of Reddish trade rumors right now, I'll tell you right now. Oh, there's, really? There's a ton out there. So a lot much of for that idea. That, that have interest in him. Um, but I don't think any, like, I, so, so I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what the, he's sort of out of the Knicks rotation at the moment. So um, it is, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, I did want to mention there's one more name I forgot, though, in this game that I think could end up being like the perfect kind of play for this game is uh, Jalen McDaniels. And he's I mean, he, like he's put up, you know, what, 36, 29, 34, his last three games. The minutes have been really consistent for him. And it's just a good kind of game environment. He's the kind of guy you could add to his stack that doesn't, you know, isn't high usage, goes out there. He'll, he'll get rebounds. He can hit threes. 
Um, but just another guy we could include. I, I think this is a really interesting game to stack, and I, and I haven't liked a first game off the bat in a while. So this is this is one of one of the first ones that I like. It's not my favorite game, but it is up there. Yeah, I like this game a lot. Um, uh, all right, you want to move on? Yeah, let's move on. What do you got? What do you? Which one's next for you? We got. Uh, I have Toronto. I have Toronto, uh, Orlando. Oh, Toronto, Orlando. Excuse me, I said Dallas. My bad. And I'm I'm seeing um, I'm seeing a good number for uh, for Markel Fultz. I mean, at forty eight hundred. Um, I don't remember how he ended up doing. I know we oh, talked. It was about the worst him. game of all time. He had played twenty seven minutes. It was zero for four from the field and had eight fantasy points. All right, sounds good to me. I'll, I'll try it. Um, yeah. So forty eight hundred, he projects decently, and coming off of a terrible game, maybe he won't be high owned. Uh, wishful thinking, I suppose. Um, uh, yeah, I like him. I don't really get into too much else though. Um, I guess Fred Van Vliet is always kind of in play, uh, and Siak Sia- is ten k. Goodness gracious. Um, so for me, it's probably going to be, you know, I'll probably lose some on Markel Fultz. It's so hard not to want to play you guys from the Raptors every game because of how many minutes they play. Yeah. I mean, even the other night, you looked, they were up by 30 against the Lakers and they still had Siakam on the court for part of it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, so I, I I just, I'll, I'll, I'll do the same thing I always do with the first look. I just think that you're, you're considering these guys. I think that Van Vliet is probably the most appealing, but I think they're all, they're all interesting. Um, it's a good matchup. And I think Fultz is the most logical run back on the other side. Franz Wagner's price has come down so much, but it's, it's kind of hard with all these other guys back for him to be as good of a play as he was earlier in the season. Um, so I'm probably just going to have to pass on that one, but he was the other guy I considered. We probably should mention that Mo Wagner has been putting up just these ridiculous games. He's 5,700 and he put up 42 and 47 the last two games and in, in not ideal matchups. This is another non-ideal matchup, but I, I just think that like, if you're playing a bunch of lineups, you're maybe mixing him in, but, Nobody who I have is a full on priority from this game, but I I do think that I may I may end up considering some guys later on Fultz and and Van Vliet off the top of my you know at, at first look, but I do think there's an argument for maybe a Mo Wagner in tournaments. Um, all right, what do you got next? It's uh, Washington Indiana. Why don't you start off with that one, Sheets? This is a, another good good game for potentially stacking. Well, first of all, um. So Isaiah Jackson has been back in the mix. I wasn't aware of this. Well, that's because Jalen Smith was out the last game. Oh, okay. And the game before that, Turner was out. Okay, fair enough. Um, It it looks like a game that you're supposed to stack, right? Um, But I'm getting like, I mean, Porzingis, 9,400, I suppose. Kuzma, 8,100, I suppose. And then I'm getting Avdia. Well, okay, so Avdia at 4,800 looks to be some value, as does – yeah, maybe you're right. Daniel Gafford, Monty Morris. Yeah, all these Washington guys for some reason. So Avdia, Gafford, Monty Morris, they all project well points per dollar. And then um, Indiana, I have Miles Turner at 6,900 to be the best, like, point per dollar player or whatever on that team. But, but Halliburton, once again, you know, 9,200 – uh under 10 percent ownership uh looks good to me uh so yeah it's a 233 total close enough spread you're probably supposed to do something here uh oh brazil won god dang it oh did they score yeah in extra time well it's not over yet yeah it's too bad though oh all right so you said avdia um yeah I, th- I mean all these guys are are semi-interesting there's still some q tags out there but I, I like porzingis the price is is maybe a little bit of sticker shock but he's i mean he's been good they're short on bodies here um and i i think porzingis and kuzma are, are definitely in play um uh, but the, the i think avdi has a really really solid play um not getting to to the other fringy ones the morris and kispert right now um and I, I think maybe, you know, just keep an eye out for starting lineups because if if you end up seeing, like, they, they have started a couple times Jordan Goodwin in these spots, and I still don't know if I even want to play him, to be honest with you, so maybe I'll just ignore what I was going to say. But because of the size that Indiana plays with, I think Gafford could be in for more minutes tonight. So Gafford as a as a tournament play, I think, is a kind of interesting. Gafford. All right. Um, Sheets, what do you got next? I have um, Sacramento against Cleveland. Okay. 
Uh, let's go for that. Why don't you start that one off? Kuzma? Yeah. Um, I don't really have anything. Uh, I'm looking down my list of values, and I, I get down to number number 25 before I see anybody, and that would be Darius Garland. So I guess this game is sort of a pass for me. Let me just double check, looking at it a different way. Donovan Mitchell, 8,700. I mean, he's always possible. So I guess Garland and Mitchell, and and I'm not really seeing anything on Sacramento. Yeah, it's a tough one to get to Sacramento for me because of the matchup is is pretty tough. But I love Donovan Mitchell here. Um, Ooh, okay. I think Mitchell and Halliburton make perfect sense as as two guys you could spend up for and not spend all the way up. And um, yeah, I, so I I like those guys. I I don't think I, I do want to say that that we're going to see a lot of ups and downs from from Keegan Murray, and he was pretty good the last two the last three games. He put up thirty eight and twenty nine. He's four K. Probably not going to do it tonight because uh, the big slate. But I do think Keegan Murray deserves at least a little bit of uh, consideration. And I like the prices on these Kings guys. It's just hard to get there. I think De'Aaron Fox has been playing hurt and just not quite able to uh, to do anything with this one for me. So uh, it is interesting. It's only a three and a half point spread for in, for Cleveland. Uh, Sacramento has been pretty feisty, but I'm surprised that they're only favored by three and a half. Um, really like Mitchell. And I think I think Mitchell or Garland are both – totally in play i personally am more on the mitchell side than garland but i i like both of them all right next up we have uh, next up we have the next up we have the best play on the slate okay go who is it <laughs> well we have atlanta at brooklyn and we have bogdan bogdanovich at 4100 i mean uh, somebody somebody tell me a better play it i'll play it but that that's what i like um and what's interesting is that i'm not really seeing well, then I got Durant at 10-5. Um, Trey at 10-3 at 5% ownership. But I don't know. I, I think this is I think this is Bogdan Central, this game. He's coming off a 3-for-16 performance two, uh, two, uh, two, day, two days ago. Um, I am, Listen, I imagine he's going to be really popular. How, how, how is he not 4,100? But I don't know. That, that, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm seeing right now. Yeah. Um, I, I'll play him. <laughs> Right, I mean, uh, his minutes should should start ramping up pretty soon. Not not to me- not to mention small forward eligible. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I'm on board with the Bogdanovich uh, the Bogdanovich play, and uh, that's pretty much my favorite thing in this game. I think playing Kyrie again for the ceiling he just hit is yeah. totally doable. Um, I think that playing KD at ten five is totally doable. Not quite get not quite prioritizing them as ahead of some other spots that I like a little bit better, and. I don't think that with Hunter back, I mean, we're already losing minutes on Jalen Johnson anyway. He's going to be a part of their rotation and have some good games, but I think I'm probably going to look for better value than the 3,800 uh, Jalen Johnson here. And keep in mind, Ben Simmons will be back as well. Um, I don't think I want to play Simmons because I'm a little concerned about what they're going to do with him minutes wise and all that. But I do think it takes away a little bit of the assist and rebound upside from Kyrie and and KD uh, as well as Claxton. So a uh, little less interesting of a game than you would think between Brooklyn and Atlanta for me. Just, just, just Bogdanovich is a priority for me right uh, at the moment. I'm trying to figure out that, that, that there's some guys projecting like, like I'm not going to play Aaron holiday, but I'm trying to figure out what I'm missing exactly. That's making Aaron holiday look like a better play. Um, not really sure what that is, but I'm not, not going to play him anyway. So, all right, sheets, you ready to move on? Yep. All right. Next up we have Lakers and Philly, right? All right. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. James Harden's under nine k. Um, uh, Joel Embiid's under twelve k. Um, I, I like both of them. I don't know who's playing for the Lakers, so I don't, I don't even know who I'm projecting. Hold on a minute. So I, I think I'm they're going to play. I think everybody will play. There's no reason to assume that they won't. In my opinion. Okay, for whatever reason, I'm not. I don't have any of these Lakers in my numbers yet, so I got. I got to. I got to rethink all this. So uh, I don't have any of the Lakers listed right now, so I can't really comment on them. Um, but I imagine that Embiid and and or Harden would be good plays. Um, I currently have Embiid as the top, the top spends um, given price on the slate. So uh, yeah, Embiid, Harden, Lakers. You know, they give up some points. Uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I, I I think that Embiid is going to be really low owned. So if you like that, I think that's an interesting play. Um, 
just because it is a tough matchup. I mean, it's weird because they're playing Davis the five these days, but he's going to play against Embiid and he's still a very good defender. He's been actually awesome this year. Um, I like Harden. Uh, 8,900 is feels too cheap. He t- it took two overtimes and he played awful, awful, awful. But um, he did. And he went for he, he was four for 19 from the floor. Um, I'll take a shot with Harden at 8,900. I think that's just a little too cheap for him. But the problem is we have a lot of guys in this price range. Harden, uh, I mentioned Mitchell. Um, I me- mentioned Halliburton. And I also really like uh, 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 Anthony Edwards at, at, at 9K. So the, all these guys in this price range are really interesting to me. Um, and I just think that, you know, I'm going to have to try and find the right mix of them because I think they're all really, really good. I think Edwards is the clear best one but I love Halliburton, Mitchell and Harden as well. Um, and, uh, and Embiid, I'm probably just going to hold off today. It's a tough, you know, it, this is going to be a tough one for the Lakers, but I think that they could be competitive here. I just can't find a play. I really love, as I keep trying to point out to everybody, LeBron is really, he's very shooting reliant and scoring reliant. Now he doesn't, he, he did get a, he can get a ton of rebounds when you have no AD like he had the other day, but it's just not the same LeBron in terms of driving to the basket, creating things for himself or others. He just doesn't shoot the free throws that he used to. So his ceiling is a little bit harder to get to without him just going lights out. So I probably off of the Lakers, even though uh, I kind of like the idea of stacking this game probably more than I like the actual, the actually doing it. I'm probably not going to be able to do it. All right. What do you got for Detroit and Memphis? Um, I mean, you got, significant i mean not significant i mean you have you have legit blowout risk in this game um you have morant who can score a lot of fantasy points and i I just i just wish i knew i wish there was something on detroit i could play to to keep this game close to to make that work but morant i think is uh you know he's got a ceiling literally every day um at a 10-6 he can certainly he could certainly get there um, I don't. I'm, I, I don't think I'm getting to at least right now, to much anything else. Um, I see nothing on Detroit. I see nothing on Memphis. Or, am I missing something? No, um, I'm confused at why Isaiah Stewart's projection is so high. Like yeah. I'm really trying to understand it. Oh, okay. And it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, the minutes have been there, and he's been a good point per minute guy in the past. But it's I don't know. It feels like a little bit of a high projection. I think I think Isaiah Stewart is totally fine. Um, but I, I don't know why it's so high. I, Jaden Ivey's, you know, we haven't seen the game from him in a while. I'm not worried about it. it happens with rookies. And it's you got like a little bit of a weird narrative. Like you have Morant and Ivey's like a little bit the, the new version of the Morant athletically a little bit. Um, not really a narrative, I guess. Just it's kind of interesting. So maybe, I, I mean, Ivey will get up for every game anyway. It's just it, Killian Hayes has been awesome. So he, we haven't really seen the Jaden Ivey show like we sort of thought we would without uh, without Cade. Um, I'm not all that interested in most of the stuff in this game. I, I think Jaw is always a great play, was as well, especially without Bain. And I think that you could make an argument for for Jackson, Adams, a lot of guys, but I, I just don't really love anything. Um, so I'm probably gonna be mostly on the uh Stewart or nothing. I, you know, Bogdanovich has a has a ceiling and he's 6100. That's a play you could you could consider, but I just that's pro- it's probably honestly what, what they would need to keep them in the game. But it is hard to find anybody on Detroit to like other than maybe Stewart. And even that I don't like love, love. So I'm just sort of iffy on, on this whole game in general. And I worry about it staying close. But John ja Morant, um, if it does, should be able to do whatever he wants. There's nobody who can guard him. Um, yep. Yeah. All right. Phoenix and New Orleans. Um, everything, that nice little 30-minute breaks between all the games. Not like these huge gaps like we've had before. Um. Sheets, are you getting to anything here? Because this is a really, really good life game between possibly the two best teams in the West. Uh, it's really hard to know who the best teams in the West are, but I'm having a hard time getting to anything except for that. It is sort of catching my attention that you have a 6,800 CJ McCollum, which just feels a little bit too cheap. I'm just not getting the much. I mean, Booker, I guess, is the best play from the New Orleans side, from the Phoenix side. And and then there's Aiton, obviously, and then there's there's Zion. I mean, but all these guys look a little expensive. Um, they're, they're the best plays I have from this game, which I think, like you said, I think I'm supposed to get more. You know, it's a 230 total with, with you know, a close spread, but it seems like everybody's fairly priced. I'm not really seeing too much value here. Yeah, I'm curious how many minutes Chris Paul plays, too. He's 66. 
Paul and, and McCollum are, you know, they've got ceilings at, at these prices. Um, and it is Chris Paul going back to New Orleans, you know, where he played for years. I got to double check his history there. I think it's probably pretty decent. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's a nice, nice pace game, but like, I don't really have a, a whole lot I love here. Uh, you know, good offenses and, and there should be scoring, but I, I'm not, outside of McCollum and, you know, maybe I'll make one McCollum and, uh, and, and Paul, Chris Paul lineup and that'll call it a day basically, because I, I don't really know what else to do. Um, I'm just trying to see, can you get to Zion here? Probably not worth it. Probably better plays in that range, even though I like him. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of tough. Dyson Daniels is in play, but I'm not going to do it probably. So yeah, I'm just I think it's just the the Chris Paul and uh, McCollum with any interest for me. You Hang on, I got I got to pause. For, uh, can you I'll pause, pause for it, a second? I'll pause it. Yeah, so I think I think that the New Orleans Phoenix game is just it's just not my not my favorite because I think we're going to get into a game in just a minute that I that I really love. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me all right cheats what do you got with the uh, minnesota utah game well i mean it's 200 million point total and it's a close game and you have gobert going back to utah i mean there's a lot of stuff going on in this game um yeah and yeah and, and but, but i mean there's stuff that we don't know i mean Markin and his is questionable um sexton is out conley is questionable i this is this is annoying it's a later game and I would love to wait. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would love to wait. And that's what makes that Brooklyn game. And I said, that Nick game a little, little, little tougher because you really want this Utah news. I mean, you get a 235 point freaking total like this. Um, you, you're going to, you're going to want this. Uh, you might even want if all these guys play, you know what I mean? So, so, so if they don't, you're going to have to deal with it. Uh, this stinks. Nonetheless, I mean, even projections aside, I mean, nobody really project. Everybody projects pretty, pretty full, actually. I mean, nobody really projects that great, but all these, everybody in this game has a ceiling, you know. Like um, Anthony Edwards, what is he like? Eleven K now, though. I mean, he's nine K. He's not bad. His he's, projection that, is total- his projection is broken. I'm just telling people right yeah, now, it's it's ridiculous. it's ridiculous that it's broken. That it that can it's. I, like- can I just bet the over forty one fantasy points? I'll make it easier. I mean, come on, like what are like really? That's his median here. His yeah, two, okay. his his three games so far. Without Cat or yeah, it's three games. He's put a 56, 46, and 57. And now he has like the best matchup in basketball. <laughs> I don't know how he's possibly supposed to be projected there. I think he should be projected around 50. Oh my uh, God, dude. Croatia just scored. Th- let's go. Come on. Oh, let's go. Um, all right. Uh they are going nuts. Oh my God. They are going bananas that's in, 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 in Qatar. <laughs> that's awesome. These Croatian, you were talking about them last night. That is sick. <laughs> All right, let's get it. I hope they, I hope, I'm going to turn that on right after we're off this. Yeah. Um, All right. So, so, so going back to it. So th- this game is like, I think you just like, I, I'm just going to sell out on this game. Like I, okay. I, I'm, I'm going to, this is going to be my priority of builds. I'm going to have some Kyle Anderson, some Jalen Noel, some Rudy Gobert, some Jaden McDaniels, um, Mostly it'll be Edwards as my main play and I am going to play D'Angelo Russell some as well. Um, I also think that uh, on the Utah side, Mike Conley, um, I'm, I'm going to play him and just assume that he plays. And if he doesn't, I pivot over to Beasley. Um, but I also am going to have some exposure to Beasley. So th- that that's my plan right now. And then, and then I'll mix in a little bit of, of the other guys, depending on who plays, but, um, I'll just put, I'll put Olenek in as a, as a, as a piece, and then I'll try to leave money on the table. I'm going to play some Walker Kessler. I'm just going to get real, real creative with it and, and try to get four or five guys in most of my lineups from this game, just because I want the exposure to this, this environment. And you definitely have a chance if anybody else sits that it just bumps, every, bumps everyone one up for what it's worth. If there's a game that Utah ever wants to win, it's going to be these games. Like they yep. desperately want to win these games because they have yep. Minnesota's pick. If Minnesota's yep. out of the play, oh, nice. That's a big deal. Um, and then Minnesota needs to win games to get in there. Cause they sort of, you know, are getting mocked for making the worst trade ever. So I think this is going to be like, you're going to see more minutes out of your best guys, I think, than usual. So I would give everyone an uptick in minutes if the game stays. I mean, if the game stays close. I think that these guys could play really, really, really high minutes. And I don't think Conley's going to be that limited on his coming his coming back. I think he should play around 30 minutes. So I uh, really like this game as a as a stack. And I like the side pieces also. 
uh, even if they end up just being reserve guys until we, you know, get some weird news later in the day and some other guys we have to play. But I like that it's late and it's definitely my favorite game to stack on the slate. All right. Well, Luca didn't like being, any of that, right? Sheets? Luke, Luke, yeah, if you didn't like any of that, you get Mr. Luca against Mr. Giannis. Um, I'll tell you this, I don't have anybody, I don't like anybody else in this game. And I think these guys are man, I think they're just too expensive. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I just think they're too expensive. I think both teams are gonna play good defense uh, as good as as well as they can. And I just I just I just don't think you're going to need either of these guys today. Um, now, with that said, they're both going to be five percent owned, <laughs> um, um, and I'm certainly, if I have a big score, I'm going to have to watch that game <laughs> to, to make sure that these guys don't get eighty, because uh, right. they certainly could. But I just, I just think the pricing is just too, too high. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you can find a way to do it in one lineup just for fun, but I don't really love it. Um, I'm not really sure why Christian Wood is projecting so well today. I guess it's the bigs. Christian Wood, Christian Wood stinks. <laughs> He's actually in real life basketball. I think he actually yeah. does. Yeah, no, He's I know. Very talented, but like his team, he's, he's got the new Dwight Howard thing. Every team he's been on has hit the under in their projected win, uh, win loss totals before the Pretty season. Fine. He's never played for a winning, winning team really, um, until now. And even then they're not really winning. So, um, I like Tim Hardaway Jr. Uh, a little bit here and th- that's my favorite play in the game i think that like it is probably worth mentioning that drew holiday has just done nothing but put up 45 or more every game since middleton's been back yeah yep um yep uh something to keep an eye out for and i also think middleton we're not ready to play him yet but it's going to be soon that we start playing him this is not the right matchup but i if his price keeps dropping he's going to be t- he's too good of a guy to be under 7k you know for a guy who's going to average you know 37 ish fantasy points in general so we're going to want to start playing him pretty soon, but it's not quite the time yet, in my opinion, in this in this matchup. But, yeah, I, I mean, look, I'm not going to argue with you. I think that on FanDuel, you could probably do the Luka and Giannis thing, but I don't think on DraftKings it makes quite enough sense. Um, it is tempting when you see Luka go 5 for 17 in the last game and he puts up 57 fantasy points. I know. It's like, crazy. It's just nuts. Um, well, in the 117th minute, huh? I just got the little alert. 120th, so they're plus two, extra, they're an extra time of extra time. Yeah, no, the score I meant like in the they scored in the one seventeenth. That's just kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. It's one one, and they're gonna they're well, nothing happened the next couple of minutes, uh, next minute, or so they're gonna go to shootout. Yeah. Oh my god. Um. All right. So so going through the slate and in, in in terms of like favorite plays, um, I I do really like the I like the Bogdanovich, uh, for value right now. Other than that, there's there's like no really great like awesome feel great about it kind of like cheap value. There, you got Bogdanovich quickly. They're both reasonable. Mitch Rob and, and Avdia, they're all reasonable, but nothing that you feel like at 3K, you're getting like an 8X projection. My guess is by the time we go live, that's going to change. Um, but Bogdanovich for now, uh, Love Edwards, Mitchell, Halliburton, that whole price tier I think is just awesome. And then I want to play Minnesota and Utah as my other priority um with these 8k guys uh whatever i can get in edwards being my favorite play probably on the slate to be honest with you especially if the ownership stays low also like rogier and Ubre, and then the brunson randall or you know brunson or randall kind of thing um but i've got a lot more that i like at, at first look than i usually do so i've got like 20 plays that i'm going to be trying to cycle my my picks through and i'll get my builds up on on uh on the site and i will get my core plays up in the next hour or so Sheets, anything else? Be before we get out here? I will be there. At, I will be there at six. <laughs> awesome. At least for a few minutes. And uh, now, now, at what point? So it's twelve thirty-five right now. Is it twelve forty-five that Giannis gets ruled out, or <laughs> someone gets ruled out? I don't know who it's going to be, but uh, maybe it's like maybe it's like Ja or something like that. Yeah, that would certainly make things interesting. Yeah, um, I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, no. Well, yeah, the one thing is you just then you have to play Tyus Jones, even if he was 10K, because he just puts up like 50 something every time. Yep. yep. All right, guys. Well, good luck to everybody. We'll see you guys at 6 Eastern and uh, let's crush it today. And I'll, uh, hey, Bobby, I'll see you.